Hi there, welcome back to the English class. And let's look into Unit 3, Human Relations. Today we have an audio-visual treat for you. The third reading, Never Never Nest, is a play. And we have created an animated video just for you. But first of all, let's talk about what it is. The Never Never Nest is a one-act play authored by Cedric Mount. This person had a very brief literary life of just eight years. But in those eight years, he's written amazing plays, those that are thought-provoking. This too has a message. What it is, you can see for yourself and we'll discuss later. But first, let's talk a little about what is a one-act play. A one-act play is usually quite brief. It deals with just two, three characters and it starts abruptly, suddenly from one scene. And the most important part about it is that it ends in a surprise. It ends in a message. So the Never Never Nest is one such one act play. So let's dive in, sit back, enjoy the animated video we've created and we shall talk about it after that. Stay and tuned. this is the launch. Charming, charming, such a cozy little room and such pretty furniture. We like it, you know. Handy place to sit in and listen to the radiogram. Oh, have you got a radiogram as well as a car and a piano? Why, of course, Aunt Jane. You simply must have a radio set nowadays. And it's so nice for me when Jack's away at business. I even make him move it into the kitchen so that I can listen to it while I cook. Sit down, Aunt Jane. You must be tired. We've shown you everything now. What do you think of our little nest, Aunt Jane? I think it's wonderful, my dears. The furniture and the car and the piano and the refrigerator and the radio, what's it? It's wonderful, really wonderful. And we owe it all to you. Yes, Jack, that's what's worrying me. Worrying you, Aunt Jane? Yes, that check I gave you for your wedding present. It was only 200 pounds, wasn't it? I didn't put in 2,000 by mistake. Why no, Aunt Jane? What on earth made you think that? Well, that's all right, but I still don't altogether understand. This house, it's very lovely, but doesn't it cost a great deal for rent? Rent? Oh no, we don't pay rent. But Jack, if you don't pay rent, you'll get turned out into the street. And that would never do. You've Jill and the baby to think of now, you know? No, no, Aunt Jane, you misunderstood me. We don't pay rent because the house is ours. Yours? Why, yes. You just pay ten pounds and it's yours. You see, Aunt Jane, we realized how uneconomic it is to go on paying rent year after year when you can buy and enjoy a home of your own for ten pounds and a few quarterly payments, of course. Why be Mr. Tenant when you can be Mr. Owner? I see. Yes, there's something in that. Even so, you must be getting on very well to keep up a place like this. Oh, he is, Aunt Jane. Why? Only last year, he had a five shilling rise. Didn't you, Jack? Of course, that's nothing really. I'm expecting ten this Christmas. Jack, I've just thought of something. The car, is it yours? Of course it's ours. All yours? Well, no, not exactly all. How much of it? Oh, I should say the steering wheel and one of the tires and about two of the cylinders. But don't you see? That's the wonderful thing about it. I don't see anything wonderful about that. But there is, Aunt Jane. You see, although we could never buy a car outright, we can enjoy all the pleasures of motoring for a mere five pounds down. And the rest by easy installments, I suppose? Exactly. Exactly. And what about the radio? What's it? Well, that's the... And the piano? Well, of course. And the furniture? I'm afraid so. I suppose all you own is this leg. Well, no. 
As a matter of fact, it's that one. And the rest belongs to Mr. Sage, I suppose? Uh, yes. Well, I'm not going to sit on Mr. Sage's part for anyone. Now tell me, how much do all these installments come to? Well, actually, do seven pounds eight and eight pence a week. Good heavens! And how much do you earn? As a matter of fact, um, that is six pounds. But that's absurd! How can you pay seven pounds eight and eight pence out of six pounds? Oh, that's easy. You see, all you have to do is to borrow the rest of the money for the payments from Thrift and Providence Trust Corporation. They're only too glad to loan you any amount you like on note of hand alone. And how do you propose to pay that back? Oh, that's easy too. You just paid back in installments. Installments? Aunt Jane, is anything the matter? Would you like to lie down? Lie down? Do you suppose I'm going to trust myself in a bed that belongs to Mr. Sage or Marx and Spencer or somebody? No, I'm going home. Oh, must you really go? I think I'd better. I'll drive you to the station. What? Travel in a car that has only one tire and two thingamies? No, thank you. I'll take the bus. Well, of course, if you feel like that about it. Now, sorry if I've sounded rude, but really, I'm shocked to find the way you're living. I've never owned a penny in my life cash down. That's my motto, and I want you to do the same. Now look, here's a little check I was meaning to give you anyway. Suppose you take it, pay off just one of your bills, so that you can say at least one thing really belongs to you. Oh, thank you, Aunt Jane. It's very nice of you. There. Now I must be going. I'll see you to the bus anyway. Goodbye, Aunt Jane. And thanks so much for the present. Goodbye, dear. Oh, nurse, I want you to run and post this for me. And look after the baby while you're gone. Certainly, madam. Well, she's gone, what a tartar. Still, she didn't leave us a bit on account. How much was it? Ten pounds. Phew, that's great. We can pay off the next two months on the car with that. Ah, uh, I'm afraid we, we can't. Why ever not? You see, I, I, I've already sent it off for something else. Nurse has just gone to post it. Well, that's all right. Who have you sent it to? Dr. Martin. Dr. Martin, what on earth possessed you to do that? There, now you're going to be angry with me. I'm not angry, but why waste good money on a doctor? Doctors don't expect to get paid anyway. But, but don't you understand? Understand what? Why? Just one more installment and baby is really ours. There, that was the never, never nest. Now, did you get an idea what it was about? But first of all, let's appreciate the efforts that have gone into the making of this video. The voiceover was done by me, the voice of Jack, the voice of Aunt Jane and Jill. But thanks to our technical team and our directors, have you seen the difference they've created in my voice? Yes, that was me, Jack. So coming to the title, The Never Never Nest. If you observed, the entire play was about one key word. That word almost got Aunt Jane fall off her chair. What was that? Installments. Yeah? Installments, what do they do? You pay in parts. You pay a little by little. You basically are purchasing something on credit. Now what happens when you buy something on credit? That means you're buying something with, with something you, that's not there in your hands right now. You don't have the entire amount required to buy a car. You are buying it in installments. The day you have money to pay an installment, you're fine. But the day you do not have that money to pay that particular EMI, what happens to you? Neither do you get the car, nor do you get back the previous installments that you've paid. Do you realize what a big risk it is to live your life on credit? 
if you have observed Jack and Jill in the story, everything in that house was purchased on installments and Aunt Jane kept telling them, look, live your life with what you have. Do not imagine, do not take it for granted that in future you will get that money and you will finally purchase that object, whatever you're buying. Installments are very, very risky. So why is it called the never, never nest? Because they are paying and paying and paying and it's never ending. Nobody can guarantee that one day, yes, I will pay the entire amount of this house, I'll pay the entire amount of the car, I'll pay the entire amount of every object I've taken on installments. Nobody can guarantee that. It can be a never, never nest. It can be a house that's never yours in future. And what was the twist towards the end? Even their baby was taken in installments. Now that is the surprise element. That is the social issue that Mr. Cedric Mount is addressing in this play. Not only are we purchasing physical objects, materialistic things, but also relations. So what do you have to learn? Human relations we are born with a set of relations. Let's cherish them. Let's not lose them like the previous lessons, the journey, how the son just uh, parted away from his father, the same father who must have spent 20 years raising that son. But they parted ways. The relation dissolved. And in this chapter, what did you learn about relations? It's about treasuring them and keeping them alive. You cannot buy relations. And yes, no to credit. Earn your money, keep yourself safe. No installments, no credit. So I hope you enjoyed it, yes? And we will see you in the next unit that is about biodiversity. See you soon.